Welcome, my name is Roberto Locatelli. Sometimes we have the need of animating several meshes in a harmonious manner. It happens, for example, when we have a character with clothing and shoes, not to mention the eyes, which is often meshes separated of the rest of the body. When we want to move, let's say, an arm of this character, obviously we want that the shirt follow this movement. The worst way to do that is join all the meshes in one single mesh. It's bad because each mesh has its material, maybe with texture, UV unwrap, etc. You would need to create a lot of edge groups and also unwrap a complex mesh that would be created. It's not practical. There is a blender tool called SoftBuddy that is perfect to use with loose clothing, like dresses and tunics. But we can use an armature, especially if we are talking about tight clothing, which is not affected by wind or gravity. Let's see a character. Then we'll see a basic example about how to make this. This is a make human character. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to this great software. We have several meshes here. The character himself, his clothes, eyes, shoes. Note that when I move the arm, the shirt moves too. When I move the leg, the pants and shoes move too. When I move the head, the eyes keep their positions on the face. And, as you see, the armature is the same for all meshes. Let's see how this can be done. It's quite simple. I'm using version 2.73a. Open a new Blender file. We'll use the default cube, increasing its size on the z-axis. Type S for scale, then Z, then move your mouse away from the center of the cube until the cube gets approximately this shape. If you aren't satisfied yet with the size, you can repeat this operation. Now we'll apply loop cuts. Type 5 on the number pad to switch to orthographic view. Type 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. Remember that for Blender, the numbers on the number pad have different functions than the numbers over the letters. If you are watching this video in a notebook or other device which has not a number pad in its keyboard, you can use the inferior menu view to make these operations. Type tab to switch to edit mode. Hold down to press the control key and type R. Move your mouse next to a vertical edge. A purplish horizontal loop appears. Scroll the wheel mouse until you have around 5 or 6 loops. Click enter twice, one for accept the number of the cuts and another to apply the position of the cuts. Click tab and switch back to object mode. Grab the mouse on the blue arrow and drag the mesh until the base is right on the 3D cursor, which is on the geometric center of the 3D view. The 3D cursor is this little circular icon. If you accidentally alter the 3D cursor position, hold down Shift, click S and choose Cursor to Center. By the way, the 3D cursor position defines where new objects will be created. Let's create more objects. In the tab Create, on the left, click on Cylinder. Click S, then type 1.5, then Enter to increase the size of the cylinder. We will move the cylinder like we did with the cube until its position is more or less here. Also for the cylinder we will apply loop cuts. Click tab to switch to edit mode. Hold down the control key and click R. Then scroll the mouse wheel until you have three cuts. Type enter twice. Click tab to switch to object mode. Finally, one last mesh. On the create tab click on UV sphere. Then type S then 2, then enter to double the size of the sphere. With the mouse grab it on the blue arrow, we will move the sphere to about here. For animate multiple meshes with one single armature, it's much better if all objects and the armature have the same pivot point, also known as origin. Select all the objects. To do that, one way is clicking B, then hold down the left mouse button and make a rectangle that covers the three meshes, even partially. 
Now go to the inferior menu. Click in Object, then in Transform, then choose Origin to 3D Cursor. It's time to create the armature. On the Create tab, choose Armature. You may scroll down the Create window to see this option. We can't see the bone because it's inside the meshes. To see it, go to the right panel, click on the yellow cube icon, which is the Properties tab. Go to the label Display and enable X-Ray to turn the armature visible even when behind or inside objects. In the Maximum Draw type, choose Wire. In my opinion, this is the best option to work with armatures. We create one single bone. We need more bones. Click Tab to switch to Edit Mode. The tip of the bone is already selected by default. If not, right-click on it to select it. Or left-click if you set so your blender. Grab the mouse on the blue arrow and drag the tip until the top of the cube, which is not a cube anymore, and click A one or twice to select the entire bone. Type W and choose Subdivide. On the left panel, set the number of subdivisions to 6. Click Tab to switch back to Object Mode. The last step is associate the armature with the meshes one by one. To this operation, it's easier if we change to wireframe view. So, type Z. Let's start with the cube, which now is a pillar. Select first the mesh and then, with the shift key pressed, the armature. Hold down Ctrl and type P for parent. Choose with automatic weight. Now the armature is associated with the pillar. Remember that in this operation, the order of selecting the objects is crucial. Do the same for the cylinder. Select it, then select the armature with the shift key pressed. Hold down Ctrl and type P. Choose with automatic weight. And again, the same procedure for the sphere. Then type Z to switch back to solid view. In these operations, weight term refers to how each bone influences each part of the mesh. We can say that the armature is like a skeleton and the mesh is like the muscles. Select the armature and, in this pop-up menu, choose Pose Mode. Select, let's say, this bone. Click R for Rotate and move your mouse from one side to the other. See how the cylinder and the pillar follow the movement. Let's test this bone. Click on it, type R and move your mouse. And again it works. The pillar and the sphere are following the movement. So this really works. The armature is ruling the movement of three meshes. This is all for now. See you on the next video.